scene. And I returned to that scene and what did I feel a sense of hope before? Crumbled as I step out onto that cold, silent track. Fighting back my tears, I start collecting bits and pieces of a young man. So, the time has come, Jade. Hi. Hold on. Should I try and... I'm going to do a, a little sound test first and I'll see if we can get you in the right position. Okay, please report to aisle 13. Yep, yeah, is that okay? We're okay here. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Are you going to hold me up like I'm a toddler? Yes. Brilliant, thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, so here's a poem about my version um, of autism, which is, uh, well, it's quite mathematical, um, but it can it can lead me to having a bit of a tizz at times. So here we go. At last, a moment to breathe, or a moment to think. What's that? A button and two pieces of thread. Oh, there are three birds in the sky, now four more flying high. Houses in view add up to five, and six swimmers on the telly take their dive. Seven more. Stop. Too much. Okay. And breathe. And get out from under the table. It's not as bad as it feels. And the wondering inside reels. My mind asks who, what and why. Please promise I'll get the answer before I die. Ah! Let's count it out. One plus one plus one. Plus one plus one plus one. Plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one plus one plus two. No, 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 it doesn't work. And if it, that doesn't work, then what does? What does and what could and what will? Why is this so important right now? It wasn't this important this morning. I know, I know, I'm being over dramatic. But seriously, the budgie is going to get cancer unless you move up the step right now. What the? Why would the budgie get cancer because of a step? Okay, you really need to move up the step now just in case. Because if the one plus one plus one thing doesn't make sense, then neither does, and neither does the budgie. They might both be true, so please just move off the step. And one, and two, and three, and holy shit, where if there's a light source, there's an infinite number of colours visible at any one time. How am I meant to make things simple when every day brings another asymmetric pimple? Holding court among its spotty friends on my face, its own spotty pride of place. It should be easy to find a number. I know that A over naught is impossible so far, but what makes that true forever? Like the scientists who invented lasers, fractals and the car, shouldn't we endeavour to find a way to make our day that little bit less destructive? To add to our world instead of consuming and being corruptive? What do you mean there's a cross on a weird angle? Mum? Mum, I know you're talking to Charles, but I really need to know this. Just quickly. Actually, Dad, could you pause the TV for a sec? I can't think. Too many voices. The pressure is immense. It's a wash. Oh, God, I'm so flawed. If I'm multiplying every number to infinity, well, that's possible. Sorry for the panic. I didn't mean to sound manic. Could you pass me the, my cordial? Oh, yes. It's just infinity. So that's my version of Aspie's. <laughs> Um, I'm very sorry, I can't actually see you because um, whilst technology is amazing, um, I have a, a kind of idea of faces in a black blob. Um, but I, I'm sure you're all um, fabulous people um, and I will be asking Dad for descriptions of your faces when he gets back. Um, <laughs> so I think for me, autism is just a part of me. Um, and I thought it might be an apt time to tell you about what I feel constitutes me. So here is my poem, DNA. DNA. Through these veins a story flows, its pulse my own, its composition and others. Many others in fact. It's the blood of fools and heroes, of ordinary people who found themselves parents to more ordinary people. Everyone not so ordinary in their own way. On further inspection, it seems I'm a combination of a Scottish asylum nurse, a war hero, a man who wanted only to stay at home and the woman who loved him but longed to be anywhere but home. 
I am artists and teachers, plumbers and photographers, crazy and crazier. There's little to suggest I should be expecting to be deemed normal any day soon. My tongue rolls, my earlobes are detached, and my arm lacks the primal tendon some still possess. I have been, I'd have been burnt at the stake as a witch if I'd been around in the days of some of my ancestors. Two little freckles are a prominent family mark. The kiss of a tiny vampire angel gave me away. A massive birthmark has screamed, I'm here, for all of my life so far. Though now it's begun to fade as I've begun to be mature and become more jade. It's a part of me but less prominent than my uninheritable scar. I fear my poor belly button has a mar, which frankly could be used to teach trigonometry or perhaps as a warning to any babies considering plastic surgery. Looking back, I see my eyes in my grandfather and my everything bar nose in my mother. But when merging common features of relatives in my mind, I fall short of my reflection. No string of letters, genes or chromosomes could accurately recreate this. My face held, is held even in resting in a muscle structure set by smiling and talking and eating and kissing and blinking and licking my lips exactly the way I do it. My skin is whiter than anyone before me, not because of recessive and dominant genes, but because I'm a vampire, or at least I tend to live as one. My posture is a twisted representation of my choices and afflictions, uniquely curated for me, a life of standing to attention or waiting on tables, and a life of pain and slippy discs and ribs. My eyes are bloodshot unlike my mother's, my nose buttony, my body is completely me, and that's also them, to some degree. Thank you. Thank you, Jude. Oh, I can see Blob's 